What is going on guys? Thank you for checking out another video. Hopefully it's not too awfully echo. I'm currently in my garage with the door shut, the nice bright light on, but we're going to do some bike maintenance this week because it is cold. We got snow, I think on Tuesday it snowed through Thanksgiving. I hope you guys in America had a great Thanksgiving. I uh, hope everyone else just had a great week. But, uh, there's still snow out there. It's pretty gross. It's Sunday today. This high is supposed to be like 40. Aztec is open. That's the only track I know of that's open. But um, from last weekend, just the soreness in my wrist and in my knee, has actually still been hurting me quite a bit. We're just taking the week off, but we're gonna do some bike work to Yeti here today. So nothing too crazy, but I wanted to go through what we're gonna be doing today. So first off, we're going to start with an oil change. Pretty straightforward. We have our um, 10 millimeter hex head to get the drain bolt out. So we're gonna be doing that. Pull the, pull the uh, drain plug, drain the oil. We're gonna put in a fresh filter. We also have an O-ring in case uh, we need it, in case the other one has a slight nick in it or anything. So we're gonna do that first because we're also gonna do an air filter, but um, we wanna be able to start up the bike and everything. And we can't do that without an air filter in it. So we'll just use the dirty air filter to start the bike, get the engine oil going through, change the oil, and then start it back up, make sure nothing's leaking. And then we will start on the, uh, the air filter. So we're using no toil stuff for that. We have our uh, we have a not new but a clean filter. Here's mine from uh, last time I pulled it out. So need to get that washed. But I have a whole collection of them here, so I'll wash a few at a time. For the oil, we're using of course the Frontier 10W40, the DO991 edition. Pretty awesome. Have the no toil. Whoops, no toil air box cleaner. Clean out the air box a little bit. Got a funnel. Of course, we have gloves. We have the Frontier grease to seal the edge of the um, air filter, and then we have the Tusk spoke torque wrench, so that we can uh, check the spoke. So. We're just gonna do oil, air filter, and check this boat. So it should be a uh, pretty chill, easy day, but you guys said you like to see bike work, so here we are. Let's go ahead. First things first, pretty straightforward. We're just going to pull the skid plate. So we got these tens on both sides of it, and then we have one underneath, and I think we might actually uh, put the bike on a different stand or a triangle stand or something to get that other one. You got a nice little metal dish or magnet dish, dish from uh, Harbor Freight, probably like two bucks or free with a purchase, I don't know. But just throw the bolts in there so we don't lose them. Nice and handy. Had to pull the bike off the stand to get this uh, bolt underneath here. And of course, I didn't like tilt the bike when I washed it, so I didn't get the bottom good at all. So there's a bunch of mud down here, got cleared out. So I can get to this final bolt down here that holds on the skid plate. And the skid plate is going to be full of mud, I'm sure you can see up in here and stuff, but... Oh well, it's alright. Should have just uh, leaned the bike over when I was washing it, but... Here we go, get that one out of here. There we are. Maybe... This one's always been finicky. The piece inside the frame spins too, so all of it spins. There we go. Got that. We'll pull this. And just like I thought, full of mud and stuff. But that was just because I didn't wash it well enough. But now we can get to the drain plug. So let's go ahead and put it back up on the stand. I'm going to show you guys something really cool with that. Don't worry. Put the third bolt into the magnetic dish. This is something that I actually saw on Facebook of all places. Um, for as vocal as YouTube is, whenever you do something wrong or some way someone else doesn't do it, I've never seen this shown before, but um, it's a pretty cool trick. Let me show you. So you can first see this is not my normal stand. It's my older stand. But we'll lift the bike up onto it just like normal. All right. Wiggle it back a little bit. And now we're going to actually pull the bike backwards, and the stand is going to flick up and catch the tire and hold it straight up. So, there you go. Bike is held in place. Should still be able to get to the drain bolt. Might need to navigate it a little bit. But the bike is held up and you can access the bottom of it. Never seen that done before on Holy cow. Today is one of those days where nothing wants to cooperate with me. My batteries keep dying, but grab the charger. We're gonna persevere. So, we got our 3 8 drive ratchet and our hex head for the drain plug. And we got our drain pan. So with this unique setup we got here, we are going to crawl underneath. We got a little bit of room to grab the drain plug. Not as much as you might like, but it should be enough to uh, get the job done. 
So, before we forget, let's put on those gloves. Obviously, this isn't a huge deal. Um, it's not like we're doing abrasive chemicals or anything, but still, actually, you know what? We're actually not gonna do this yet. I'm getting ahead of myself doing this video. What we're gonna do first is start the bike. We haven't drained any oil out, so we're gonna start the bike and let, uh, let the oil warm up and circulate so it'll drain a bit faster, as well as pick up all the debris from the, uh, the engine to make sure that we're getting all the crud out with the old oil. So, glad I caught that. Let's go ahead and fire it up. All right. Oh. few minutes there, maybe not even a few minutes, a minute, two minutes, just enough to get the oil warmed up. Got the gloves on, just so we don't have to worry about our hands getting too nasty here. Go ahead and pop the drain plug. Out of my power stance, and I was like. Now since we just ran the bike, of course, the oil's gonna be warm. Shouldn't it be hot yet? Nope, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, I was paying too much attention, but there we go. Grab ourselves a rag so we can wipe off our tools and drain plug and let that drain out. I like these gloves just because they're cheap and I can wear them for like one task at a time. Take them off, do stuff with the bike, put on new ones. I don't wear just one pair for the whole thing. It'd probably be easier just not to wear gloves and then, you know, use your uh, Eagle Grit to wash off your hands at the end. But I don't like my hands being gross and oily, so. Wear them for the gross stuff, take them off, put new ones on, no big deal. So now that we got the majority of the oil, where are we, there we are. Now that we've got the majority of the oil, it's only dribbling a very tiny bit. What I'm gonna do is lean the bike left and right, make sure we clear the oil out of each side of the case and just get it down into the uh, drain plug so that it can drain out. There you go, see how much more I'm getting leaning it to the left there? Definitely wanna make sure you get that all out. Switch sides. Can't see there, but it looks good. Now one more thing we're going to do. Hello, there's my beard. What's up? We're trying to navigate this. Um, I'm actually going to kick the bike through, but I'm going to hold the kill switch so that it won't start. And that's just going to, again, crank the rest of the oil through, get it out the drain plug. And of course, we're not trying to start the bike. We're just holding it and kicking through. All right, there we go. So we should have got all the oil out of the bottom of the uh, case. Quick little interjection, just because like always, no matter what you do, people are always gonna have opinions on it. If you do something different and it works for you, that's fantastic. This is how I've done it, works for me. So we're gonna go ahead and wipe down our drain plug and we're gonna put the drain plug back in while the bike is like this where we can access it. Then we're gonna put it back on the stand like normal and then we're gonna remove the filter. Just so uh, get the drain plug on, remove the rest of that oil and then uh, fill her up with some fresh oil. So I'm wiping down the drain plug now. You should use some contact cleaner. And would you look at that, my, uh, actually, what on earth is that? I was looking at my O-ring, and it actually, part of it, completely tore off. There's still an O-ring on there, so I don't know if it ripped on there, or if maybe there was, like, a residual one. Maybe that's why it was so hard for me to get the, get the O-ring, or get the uh, drain plug off of there. Had to really put some force into it, but... Let's go ahead and pull that old O-ring, and then like I showed you, I set it somewhere, I have uh, some new O-rings I keep. Uh, anytime I like order some parts from Rocky Mountain ATV MC, I always just grab some uh, oil filters so that I'll have some, obviously, I guess, um, 
for my next oil change. So, you know, if you're buying yourself a hoodie or a set of gear or boots or tires, whatever, just throw in a few uh, oil filters while you're at it, air filters if you need, but oil filters so that you have a surplus. I probably have like six or so right now and like three O-rings, just so you never wanna be changing your oil and take out your filter and then be like, ooh, I don't have a new filter or I don't have oil or you have a torn uh, O-ring seal thing and you're like, well, I don't have one of those. So just go ahead and clean that up. Um, pulled the O-ring and we're just gonna put a new one on, obviously. I mean, we already pulled it off. We're just gonna put a new one on. I do, I do not know what that chunk is for. So I'm gonna inspect under here and just kind of see what the uh, bottom of that drain plug's looking like. All right, disclaimer, the O-ring I showed you was the one for the, the filter cover, not for the drain plug, but don't worry, I have both. So got that on there. Um, one thing we're gonna make sure we do, Grab some of the oil from your drain pan and we're going to apply it to the um, threads of the drain plug. That's just gonna help it so it doesn't seize up and uh, essentially get stuck up in there. Just give it some lubrication. Lubrication. It's not like we'd put um, a Loctite on this, but we will put some oil just so that uh, when we go to take it off, it'll actually come off for us. So go ahead and put the drain plug back in the bike at this point. We'll wipe down the bottom of it. <laughs> Down here with the rag. At this point, of course, you could use a torque wrench, get your torque specs. You could do it by feel. Just make sure that it's tight, but you don't want to, you know, mash it in there. All right, that ought to do. So now we'll go ahead and put the bike back on the stand like normal. And don't you realize, I uh, don't you worry, I realize I gotta put the skid plate back on, but if I have the skid plate, skid plate on, I can't get to the oil filter. So we'll go ahead and do the oil filter, then we'll take the back bike back off, just lean it up against the wall, put the skid plate back on, but let's pull this now. Now everyone who buys a bike, you should have your owner's manual. You can also buy service manuals if you uh, like to do your own work or if you have a factory mechanic that likes to do his own work, that's a lot more in depth. But your owner's manual has some great information, torque specs and that kind of stuff. But it's also going to have your maintenance schedule. So you can see here that engine oil, you guys probably can't read that, but engine oil, it says to do every six races or about 15 hours. So um, I do mine, more than that, some people do like every other ride. Um, I don't think anyone does every ride, but air filter people do every ride, every other ride. I try and do mine like six to eight hours, definitely not pushing 15, but that is your factory recommended. So um, you can go off that if you're confused or you know, just do eight hours. But um, anyway, great information in there. Just want to throw it out there. So we're gonna go ahead and pull this. Um, it's gonna have oil in it, so we're gonna get our drain panel, uh, drain pan back over here and drain out that excess oil. Now my old Kawasaki had issues with these covers where if you did one side too much, you put it in sideways and it'd break. Obviously that's just like physics. That's probably the same on every bike, but the Cowie did it really bad. So I take extra care to go back and forth very gently when taking these off and putting them back on just to avoid it because having to buy these covers, like one, you can't ride because the cover is broken and you're gonna destroy your engine. And two, you know, 30 bucks here, 30 bucks there, starts to add up. So I'm just gonna pull that nice and slow here. And there we go, got the oil coming out. I've got one bolt we'll put into our little uh, pan. Second one, the shorter one you could see, one was long, one was short. So you can't put, you can't mix them. They only go into one each. I'm gonna pull that and we're gonna have our filter and our spring, make sure you don't lose that. And then what we're gonna wanna do is tip the bike the way of this to, well, actually we don't even need to do that. You could do that or you can get some contact cleaner and your rag and wipe out the inside of there. Just try to get all the old oil out of there. So at this time is when we wanna check this O-ring, which is the one I actually have the extras for that I showed you guys, just to make sure it doesn't have any nicks or cuts or if it's been a while since you, um, 
changed it, just go ahead and change it if you have an extra one. You know, it's a $2 part, um, much cheaper than changing a, uh, I don't know, $1,000 engine. I don't know, I don't even wanna think about how much it is when you blow your four stroke engine. But uh, actually the other thing I was going to say, some people do their um, oil filter like every other oil change, which is what I did on the Kawasaki. But since I got the Honda new, I figured, you know what, I'm gonna keep it nice. And um, every time I change the oil, I just change the oil filter. Yet again, what is it? Uh, I think when you get these Tusk oil filters, which are just as good as uh, OEM ones, they're like, what, five bucks? I'd rather pay five bucks and just do it with the oil change, make sure the bike's in tip-top condition, rather than skimping out on a cheap part and having it cost me a pretty penny. So just gonna go ahead and clean this all up, make sure everything looks good on the cover, make sure that the O-ring looks good. Yeah. And you know what, just like I said, I have an extra one. I don't know the last time I replaced that O-ring. We're just gonna replace it. By the way, at this point, I do realize how dumb it was that I even put on gloves because my hands are all oily now. So, I don't know. Sometimes I like to wear the gloves, sometimes I put them on and they just kind of annoy me. So, personal preference with that, obviously. If I cannot open this, there we are. That's the ticket. Hold on to that, pull this old one. And again, like I, I told you guys, I feel weird making these because you could read this in your owner's manual in like two paragraphs. And now this is probably what, like a 10 minute video. I'm gonna get some old oil and put it on the um, O-ring here. Um, but people said they wanna see this kind of stuff. So here it is, I hope you guys are enjoying. Hope you're having a pleasant day. I feel like Bob Ross right now. <laughs> All right, so there we go. Now we're going to hold on to that, bust out our new filter, boom. When it comes with uh, these cool little oil change dates, like kind of like a car you have up in your windshield. So if you really wanted to, you could like put this on and write all your information here and track it, or you can track it. I personally do it in my owner's manual. I've tracked every single oil change, tire change, air filter change since I've had the bike whatever works for you, but it is kind of cool that they have those. So you can go ahead and plop this on here. Now, like I told you guys, I'm going to hold this on here. I'm going to go back and forth nice and slowly. Um, this one is on the bottom. So I'm just going to go in just far enough to get the threads to barely start to grab. And I'm going to switch to the bottom. Do the same thing. And at first, I'm just going fingers, just to, just to be as safe as possible. I'm finger tightening it while putting pressure on my right thumb to hold that cover on there to make sure that it's not going too far top to bottom. Here we go. Get our T-handle. Really easy to overdo it on these T-handles. You can put a lot of pressure on them without realizing it. So just give yourself, like, looking at the top here, just like, you know, maybe one full turn, switch. If I can line this up, one full turn, switch. Might be a bit monotonous. I know I did like one and a half there, but um, better safe than sorry. And we're just gonna make sure these are nice and snug. Again, we don't need to like hammer down on these and rip out the threads or anything. Just wanna make sure that the uh, cover is gonna be falling off mid-moto. So there we go, we got the new filter in there. Now, before you forget, put new oil in it. You don't want to get ahead of yourself and not do that because that'd be bad. So there we go. Sometimes you can get those finger tight. Sometimes you have to use uh, pliers, or at least I do. I love that the Honda has the dipstick. I'm sure other brands do too, but clean that off, grab our funnel. Another thing I keep going back to is the uh, owner's manual. I know you guys can't see my face here, but um, just because every bike is different and you might say like, well, my bike takes this. Well, my bike's different than your bike, maybe. But um, you do have stuff in here such as, I was literally just looking at it. Um, how much, wow, where did I go? How much oil to put in your bike after, uh, I can't believe I lost my spot doing that. Right there, it was in the crease, I couldn't see it. Fill the crankcase with recommended oil, capacity 1.10 quarts after draining and filter change, which is what we did. So um, you can go in there and get your, um, how much you need and stuff. And like I said, we're using the Frontier Lube 10W40. 
Dio 991 edition. Come on, focus on that. There we go. What's up? Uh, Miles at Frontier making me feel factory. Very cool. Thank you, Miles. So I'll go ahead, crack this baddie open. Yeah, I'll always take a whiff. Mm hmm. You're one with your bike. So we're going to do this whole court because it's 1.10. So we one full court here. And then we'll do uh, a little bit more just to top it off and check it with the dipstick. Sometimes people ask me stuff like, you know, what do you think about this oil compared to that oil? And I'm like, dude, I do not know. I'm a dirt bike rider. I work in social media. I don't know anything about oil. <laughs> I don't know semi-synthetic, synthetic, pure, whatever. Um, you know, Maxima versus Amsoil versus Frontier. This Frontier has been great to me. Um, I love it. I love supporting the Frontier company. Love supporting, uh, you know, Daniel Blair with Main Event Moto, as well as my buddy Miles. And uh, I have nothing bad to say about the oil. It hasn't let me down. And um, in my opinion, oil is oil, you know. If your bike's gonna blow up, it's probably gonna be due to um, worn out components or negligence, AE not putting oil in it or not changing the oil in it. Um, I don't think it's going to be from uh, the actual oil you're using. So we need uh, 1.10, so 32 ounces. So we need one tenth of that, 3.2. Um, 28's up here, this is four ounces. So you'd say this is 32. So yeah, we're gonna take it to the 28 because that'll be four ounces. So we should be right at our 1.0. Quartz, and then we'll start up the bike, let it idle, and then we'll check the dipstick. So, quick maths. Mm -hmm. All right, that'll do for now, and we'll check it. So, clear all that out, put our dipstick back on, and we're not going to check the oil right now because it hasn't cycled through the engine. We want to let it run first, and then check it. But. Before we actually do that, um, I'm gonna take it off the stand and put the um, skid plate back on just so I don't have to worry about doing it later. Sitting here with the rag just kind of wiping down. I'm actually gonna start it first simply because um, I wanna check to make sure nothing's leaking and if I put the skid plate on and it's leaking from here or something, I won't be able to see it. So um, just doing a quick check. So we'll start it without the skid plate, take a look at everything, make sure everything's looking, uh, looking good. So things are looking good. Don't have any uh, oil leaking on it. Just a quick check of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the skid plate on. And uh, I put it against the wall so I could get that underneath bolt easy enough. Put the skid plate on, pop it back up on the stand, check the dipstick with the bike nice and level. And um, that should be the end of the oil change portion. As you uh, guys should know from some of my older videos with the Honda, I sometimes have bolts fall off because I suck at being a mechanic. So making sure we're using some blue Loctite on the uh, front two um, skid plate bolts. Not the back one, like I said, it's kind of finicky. So that one we just put some oil on so it doesn't seize up, but we will put Loctite on the side ones because um, I don't want more parts falling off on me. <laughs> We ran the bike for a few minutes there, checked for leaks, put it up on, uh, we put the skid plate back on, put it up on a nice flat surface here, let it sit for a second, and we're gonna check the oil. So just pull the dipstick, wipe it down, set it in without screwing it in. And sure enough, we got the oil there. So um, I don't know if you guys can see that, but all the way up, it's um, pretty much all the way to the top. So um, a little bit more, it would have been over filled, but we are perfect right there. So. Good to go on that, tighten that back down. Boom, engine oil changed. So one thing we wanna do after that, before we forget, 
is flip to the back of our owner's manual and then we're going to write the date, the hours on the bike and what we did to it. So um, engine oil as well as engine um, oil filter, oil filter. And then, uh, I mean, if you wanted to do some of these stickers, you could do that. Like I said, you could probably put it on the frame. I've never done that. I don't know, but um, that's pretty dope. Just how it works. You can, has little um, like ride stickers you pull off so that you can track how many rides you've done. And it has like miles. So that'd be like a, um, a road bike, of course or a woods bike or something, but we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna mark it in the book and um, move on up to the uh, air filter. All right, now we're gonna move on to the air filter, which uh, should be a little bit easier. We got our 10 millimeter T-handle here. We're just going to pull the uh, seat bolts. We're gonna make sure we lock tight these when we put it back on too. But um, pull these, it's gonna be super easy. We're just gonna pull the old air filter. We're gonna oil up a new air filter while well, a clean one and uh, plop in the clean one. We'll clean out the air box while we're at it. And um, I might do a quick little demonstration of the no toil cleaning product for the um, air filter for you guys, but should be uh, quite a bit easier than the oil just because it's all right here. Um, less up and down and moving the bike around and starting it and checking it and stuff. It's pretty much just pull the dirty, oil up a new, put it in. So pull these out, grab our little metal plate here with the uh, lock tight in it. Pull the seat, put that somewhere. Right here. And now to be straight up with you guys, this air filter has one ride on it. Probably one hour if that from whatever I wrote at Thunder. Um, which usually I would not change an air filter this often. I usually do it every other ride is what I like to aim for. But since I was already doing this video, you know, no harm in overdoing it. Not gonna Hurt anything by changing the oil and extra or changing the air filter an extra time so we're just going ahead and sending it so you'll see when I pull this out it's not dirty but I mean maybe to some people who are extremely picky about their stuff but that somebody is not me so go ahead and unscrew this here last time I was doing this I was doing it with my left arm it's killing my wrist so sore is like one of the longest bolts in the world it feels like it just keeps threading but there we go got that pretty easily nice little uh wing nut i think that's what it's called whatever wing nut bolt from uh, no toil and there we go so there's our air filter yeah it's, it's not clean but it's not like this was the one i pulled out from um, after Aztec, which had a few rides on it, but there you go. And then just for a comparison, here's a uh, clean one. So go ahead and uh, oil this one up and take this one off of the uh, cage. While we have the air filter off, we're gonna go ahead with the no toil air box cleaner, just to clean out inside here, just spray it on in there, and we're gonna wipe it out just keeps your air box uh, clean. I mean, just as easy as it sounds. All right, nice and clean in there. Down in the very bottom, it's dirty, but that's underneath the air boot and stuff. Um, I need to get in there like with a power washer. I can't get in there with a rag and stuff, but much better than it was. So let's uh, go ahead and oil up the new filter. I keep saying new filter. It's just a clean filter. I do have a new filter. New in the no toil bag. It's not where we're using them. Of course, these are reusable, so I wash my filters and then I have fresh ones. So not new, just clean. But we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna be using the um, red uh, no toil filter oil. I think uh, I like the green more just because it doesn't have such an alcohol smell, but they both work great. They uh, they just have different drying properties and stuff. So shake it up. This is one I always want to wear gloves for, and we're going to oil it from the inside out. So we're not going to oil the outside of it. We're going to oil the inside of it. So pour your oil into there. How much? I don't know. <laughs> I just, uh, pour some in there and go from there. So I'm doing it over a trash can, which is why I'm kind of bent down weird, but 
we're just going to work it in there. And of course, this is trapping dirt from going into your engine there. Um, so when you're oiling the inside, even though it doesn't look like it much on the outside, you're, all, the, all the oil's in the cells of the uh, foam here. So it's gonna be catching all of your, uh, all that dust and debris and dirt and stuff. So we don't wanna squeeze this and wring it because that's gonna um, compromise the integrity, but we can squeeze it. See, I'm not squeezing and twisting, I'm just squeezing. So we can squeeze the oil into there, work it all in. You start to see the red coming up through. If you were using the green oil, you'd be seeing the green coming up and through. Pretty sure the only difference is that the green is water-based and the red is alcohol-based. So this one has like a rubbing alcohol smell to it and it uh, dries faster, right? The alcohol dries out faster, but you have to wait until the filter is completely dry. So if, you're, if you only have one filter and you wash it, you have to wait for the filter to fully dry before you put it on. Um, this one, right? Yeah. But the, um, the green stuff you can put on right after washing it, but it's water-based, so the water takes longer than the al alcohol to evaporate. So you put it on, and the green stuff you have to wait overnight to ride. Yes, that's correct. So, whatever. <laughs> um, just do these, you know, during your downtime. Do it a few days before riding. Don't try and do your oil filter the day before you go out riding, or the day you are going out riding. It's just too stressful that way. Do it when you're just chilling at home, you got nothing else to do after work or after school, and you can take your time and concentrate, let the uh, oil tack up as need be. Again, we're just gonna work it through all these cells here. And give it a squeeze, get some of that oil out. You can see there's excess oil in there. I probably didn't need to do that last little uh, dumping of oil, but that's all right. I'd rather have full coverage than uh, not enough, so. Yeah, I'm just squeezing it through there, not twisting, just squeezing it. There we go, getting some good coverage. And then we're going to use the Frontier grease to grease the rim. I'm actually gonna grease it on the airbox. Grease where this goes, just for an added layer of protection. Honestly, I don't think it's necessary, but anytime you don't do it, people complain about it. And again, it doesn't hurt. Uh, rather safe than sorry, right? So. All right, we got that all on there. Just gonna grab a paper towel here and we're just gonna dab up excess oil because the oil we need is in the cells of the foam. So we're just dabbing up any excess oil that's sitting on top. Grab that grease. Whatever, butterfingers here. Go ahead and put this on the uh, cage while we're at it. A little slippery here. There we go. Make sure it's nice and over the plastic cage. Set that down, grab our grease. We're gonna go around the uh, air boot. So that, in theory, would just trap any dirt that might be coming around the edges and um, trap it in that grease. But noted, that does make it cleaning a little bit harder, but if you have that no toil air box clean, it'll wipe it right out of there for you. So clean that up. We got this on here hands real quick. This is kind of sitting weird, so it's shaped a little funny, but that'll be all right. Grab our thing, and then we're going to install the air filter. Oh. Trying to like move the camera around. My hands are just nasty from oil and stuff. All right, so we got that in there and we can just kind of go down. This is a lot of feeling to get that to line up correctly. Pretty sure KTMs where you can go in from the side are like a billion times easier, but this is much easier than my Cowie. I could never get my Cowie on the first try. And obviously you can feel it tightening up. So we're gonna tighten this down. Obviously you don't want your air filter 
slipping out of there. Then we're gonna run our fingers around the edge of the filter to make sure that it didn't get rolled up and like not have coverage because that would be a straight path for the uh, dirt and air to go down the air boot, which would not be good. So it has a good coverage. Make sure it's all the way tight. Just make sure none of these edges rolled up on us, but it feels like everything's good. Boom, there's your uh, nice clean air filter. So pull these off again. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Also gonna mark that into our uh, book so that we have um, documentation of when the filter was changed. Now we're gonna put our seat back on, making sure we get these hooks in there and the hook up front. Take off our uh, fender bench just so we have more room. Work. That fender bench is super awesome. Dalton, thank you so much for getting that for me. All right. Line these baddies up, there we go. There we are. Check those gaps. Sometimes these ones are on these Hondas are kind of hard to hit, but we got them. We can put the fender bench back up. And again, we're going to lock tie our seat bolts so that our seat doesn't fall off mid ride because I've uh, been there, done that. And I do realize my seat is very dirty because I did not scrub it out with the Brillo, but also the bike really wasn't that clean. After thunder with my knee hurting and stuff, I did not take the time I could have to clean the bike. It was a brief wash down. It wasn't like a full detailing of it, but maybe next time. <laughs> so got the Loctite on there. Still want to make sure these are good and snug. Not even snug, we want them to be tight. So there we go. That's your air filter change. Now for the final part of this, we're going to go ahead and check the spokes. Now I have the Tusk Torque spoke wrench, so I'm not doing any of the like trying to listen to it or anything. I'm just gonna set this to 55 inch pounds or whatever, not foot pounds, inch pounds. So there is 55. Again, um, your wheel manufacturer, whether you have stock or warp nine or W, whatever, Excel, I don't know. Um, they probably have a recommendation for how tight the spoke should be. So listen to them, but warp nine says 55. So that's what we're going with. So. When it clicks, of course we're good, and then we're gonna skip one, two, and hit the next one. And that's just because if you do like two in a row, you'd be pulling the whole wheel out of true, so it wouldn't spin correctly, or when it spin, you know, straight, I guess. But skip one, two, hit the next one. So we're gonna go around and um, hit all of these. And if they're loose, try not to do more than like quarter to a half a turn. You don't wanna go like three, three turns on them simply because again, that will pull it out of true. So just keep going around until they all are at the correct um, torque spec. That one's pretty loose, a little bit more. All right, we're there. Now when we get back, we go one, two, we're back at the start. We're just gonna move ahead one because if we did that one, we'd be on the same path. So we just uh, jump ahead one and it'll do now one, two. So we're on to the next set of spokes. However, at least on the Honda, I'm not sure about other bike brands, but the back wheel, um, the amount of spokes it has, you can just keep going around because it's offset. So you don't have to skip one because by the time you get around back to the start, you'll be one ahead. But on the front wheel, you have to do that little jump, at least for uh, these Honda wheels. Hold on, I just messed myself up. So I did that one, skip two, that one, skip two, okay. Whew. Nothing wrong with double checking yourself. So I went all the way through. A few of them had to be adjusted more than like half a turn. So um, I'm going back through. Got to start all the way at the beginning because I got to hit all of them again to make sure that they're all at the correct spec because when you tighten one, the one on the other side might loosen some. So you got to just keep going around until they're all good. Alright guys, well that's going to do it for Yeti and myself. I really hope you enjoyed this. Like I said, these videos are kind of weird for me to do. I feel like oil changes and air filter, that's really boring stuff. Um, who would want to watch someone else do it rather than do their own? I don't know. But a lot of people said they wanted to see it, so I'm just trying to help out and 
make you guys happy. So I hope you did enjoy it. If so, please hit that like button as uh, loud cars drive by. But yeah, there we go. We got the fresh oil. We got a fresh air filter. The spokes are all um, within spec. So we can go out next weekend. Sounds like we might go, be going to Aztec on Saturday. One of my friends who uh, hasn't had a bike for many, many years just got one. So um, go ride with him and hit Aztec. They change the track a little bit. I think it'll be sweet. But we can go out with uh, confidence knowing that Yeti will be running at full strength and nothing to worry about. So that's going to do it, guys. Really appreciate you watching. And uh, as always, until next time, take it easy. Take it easy, check out the merch if you like. And if it's easy, take it twice. I'll talk to you guys later. Um, I have the Tusk spoke uh, tote.